I recently saw a libertarian alarm clock post that was supposed to be funny and highlight the supposed hypocrisy of people who point out the actual hypocrisy of libertarians and anarchists. The post itself misses the point entirely, of course, but for the sake of completeness, I have decided to post a new version of the socialist alarm clock that has elements of the libertarian alarm clock post incorporated into it. It's all for fun, let's see if you find it amusing or not. This morning, I was awoken by my alarm clock, built by the ingenuity of millions of individuals all working for their own gain, but whose efforts were coordinated by the price of labour and materials and finished goods provided by the free market, yet one that needs to be powered by socialist electricity generated by the public power monopoly regulated by the US Department of Energy. I then took a shower using heads, pipes and sanitation facilities whose construction also involved the efforts of thousands of people acting in their own independent interests, but for which the socialist clean water has been provided by the municipal water utility. I turned on the TV to the Weather Channel, whose owners include one of the largest multinational corporations and private equity companies, to see the week's forecast presented in a clear, informative and entertaining manner, but whose information is still sourced by the Socialist National Weather Service of the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration using socialist satellites designed, built and launched by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. I watched this while eating a breakfast of socialist US Department of Agriculture inspected food and taking drugs whose strong brand name gives me the confidence in its safety but which have been determined as safe by the Socialist Food and Drug Administration. At the appropriate time which millions of people coordinate their activities to take advantage of each other's knowledge and skills, many of whom do not realise, is kept accurate by the Socialist National Institute of Standards and Technology and the US Naval Observatory, I get into my Japanese-designed, Mexican-supplied, Michigan-assembled, Socialist National Highway Traffic Safety Administration-approved automobile and set out to work on the socialist roads built by construction contracting companies named after supposedly corrupt politicians at the behest of and organised by Socialist Local State and Federal Departments of Transportation, possibly stopping to purchase additional fuel that was shipped from the Middle East by a private oil company, but of a quality level determined by the Socialist Environmental Protection Agency, using socialist legal tender issued by the Federal Reserve Bank, whether it be by plastic or cash. On the way out the door, I deposit any mail to be sent out via the Socialist US Postal Service and drop the kids off at the Socialist Public School, which libertarians would have you believe is attended only by the best students thanks to the high home prices in the area. Mm -hmm. If I get lost, I can use my socialist GPS navigation technology developed by the United States Department of Defense and made available to the public in 1996 by President Bill Clinton, who issued a policy directive declaring socialist GPS to be a dual-use military strict civilian system to be managed as a national socialist asset. After spending another day not being maimed or killed at work thanks to the socialist workplace regulations imposed by the Department of Labour and Occupational Safety and Health Administration, enjoying another two meals which again do not kill me because of the socialist USDA, I drive my Japanese, Latino, Midwestern and socialist NHTSA car back home on the Socialist Department of Transport roads to my house which has not burned down in my absence partly because of materials developed in research and development departments of corporations, partly because said materials adhere to socialist, state and local building codes and also partly because of the Socialist Fire Marshal's inspection and which has not been plundered of all of its valuables thanks in part to the lock on the door but mainly to the Socialist Local Police Department whose requirements to uphold the law trump the private security company that my neighbour employs in the belief that companies do better. I then get onto my computer and use the socialist internet, which many libertarians believe they go on to quote, watch and listen to the artists who don't appeal to a broad enough audience to make it onto one of the few channels that the government monopoly allows to be broadcast in the supposed belief that they live in China, missing the point that it was developed by the Defence Advanced Research Projects Administration and browsed the Socialist World Wide Web using my graphical web browser both made possible by Al Gore's Socialist High Performance Computing and Communication Act of 1991. I then post onto freerepublic.com and Fox News forums about how socialism in medicine is bad because the government can't do anything right. <laughs> 